Carrie, it's it's great to uh, to meet you virtually. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. How are you doing this morning? Uh, you know, um, well, I'm doing well. I'm I'm working, which is better than ninety percent of my colleagues. Um, we won the election from my side, which I'm very happy and relieved by. And uh, you know, I'm in New York, where the pandemic is relatively under control because they had such a horrific experience. So you can get a bagel without any kind of worry. Yeah, I can. Zucker's is open right now. I could walk down there and grab one up. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the nest because it is. Uh, you know, we're getting back to great storytelling, I think. Mm. Yeah, it feels like a movie from the 70s, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it really does. It has that that kind of Tess feel to it. Yeah, yeah, very adult. It is that, and it's also, uh, you know, if you are a member of a family and married, mm -hmm. uh, you go through this from time to time. So tell me a little bit about your character, Allison. Allison is married to Rory, who's in finance, and at the beginning of the film, he uproots his family, where Allison has a very comfortable uh, job helping train, uh, train people who want to learn to ride horses. She's an equestrian trainer. But he uproots his family and takes them back to his native England. And Allison really uh, is suddenly thrust into being more, more like a housewife. She's accustomed to being more of an equal partner in the marriage. And slowly that dynamic gets to be exposed. That's not maybe quite what it seems. And she chafes under the very overt, um, you know, economic and uh, social structures in England that are just, the class system is much more apparent. The misogyny is a little bit more codified. Mm -hmm. And although that stuff existed in America in that time, she's really um, feeling it in a new way, a new kind of pressure. And, you know, they're under financial straits and, in any marriage, that's, you know, that's the leading cause of trouble. <laughs> so they're really forced to drop some of their illusions and try to renegotiate this marriage and see if they can move forward. Working with Jude Law has got to be a dream come true. It's not one that I ever expected, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> uh, it's rare that I get the opportunity to play leading lady. And I think surprising for everyone in my family that I'm playing opposite people like Jude Law. <laughs> so, but he's, a, he's an extraordinarily generous scene partner. And he's also a theater guy. You know, we both come from the theater, so we work similarly. And it was just, um, it was just a delightful, uh, fulfilling experience. And I, I adore him. And working with uh, Sean Durkin. Yes, he's an extraordinary filmmaker. You know, Martha Marcy May Marlene made such an impact. And I know people were really anticipating his second film. And it's hard to get this kind of film made. So it took a while. But I know that the kinds of filmmakers I want to work with will see it. And so no matter what happens with the film and the larger conversation of awards or anything, I know that, the, that it's going to beget the kind of work that I want to do because he's just, um, you know, he's so specific. And everything you need as an actor is on the page there for you. Um, and he's a really generous director with his actors. He trusts them. You know, really, in our last few moments that we have together, I've got to talk about this other character in the film, which is the house. Yes, yes. <laughs> Extraordinary, that house. It really is the character in the film. You know, Sean's really playing with genre. He's using the elements of horror uh, and thrillers to sort of give you the feeling of what it, it's like for these people inside of this family um, in this isolation out in the country. And it's, a, it's an extraordinary home. It's, it's got 13th century architecture built in. It's part of the um, Diane Spencer and Churchill family for hundreds of years. And it's actually quite beautiful. There are weddings held there, but our production team made it look much dingier and, and scarier than it actually is. But it's a gorgeous home outside of Oxfordshire in England. What do you think audiences are going to walk away with after they, they see the film? For, for me, and I think for Jude and, and Sean, the film actually feels very hopeful because these people have finally um, let go of some of these delusions they've been living with. And at the end of the film, they have a bit of a clean slate. They can decide how they're going to move forward from this moment. So for me, it feels really hopeful that, that if you let go of your illusion, there's a possibility of... of you know, remaking those agreements and starting again. And I don't know any marriage that can survive without that kind of reset. Yeah, The Nest is a wonderful, it, it feels like theater to me when I when mm. I saw it. It felt like theater making it. You know, the camera, if you notice, is often really far from us. And so sometimes it felt like, you know, Jude and I were on a stage in rehearsal and that was really satisfying for us. Carrie, it is such a pleasure to talk with you and I'm such a fan of you in Fargo. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> what a delightful character that was. I mean, you recreated yeah. that that wonderful character. That's a, Well, you know, Noah Hawley, again, is one of our great minds working in television. He really takes whatever we're going through in the world and uses his stories to enter that obliquely so we can consider it. And 
he writes really, you know, solid, deeply respected women in his pieces. And, um, and just to be part of the Fargo legacy is a delight, a pressure <laughs> and a delight. But I was, I had a great time. I take care of yourself. Time. And uh, if I ever get to Manhattan again, I'll take you out for a real bagel. I look that. forward to that. Thank you. And we'll talk again when Ghostbusters comes out. That's right. You're in afterlife. So that's, uh, that's an yeah. incredible thing to be part of, too. It is. Yeah, I'm really, really feeling lucky these days. All right, Carrie, you take care. You too. Thank you so much. This celebrity interview is sponsored by... I'm Annette Severella with Pia Anderson Moss Hoyt, Utah's leading entertainment law firm serving clients nationwide. We provide solid, attentive representation, focusing on minimizing risk, reducing cost, and protecting the reputation and privacy of our clients. Our goal is to provide you with the legal representation you need to make the right decisions and to protect you and your creative works. Call or email me for a free consultation.